So we've got a sky swap here I've done on a very cloudy day, but using Photoshop's sky swap technique, you can see up here very common, there is some bleed of the sky that got over top of this chimney, other parts of the house as well. In fact, if I were to take a look at just the mask, we can see that there's a lot of bleed that's showing up here. Zooming all the way out, there's a whole bunch, but this is actually easy enough to fix, and so I'm gonna show you how in this tutorial. Now, the reason this is happening is because when a sky is selected with Adobe's Photoshop or even with Lightroom Classic, that sky is going to be feathered in because it thinks that you need to have a much lighter horizon. So typically you wouldn't have very blue dark sky on the horizon because of atmospheric haze that's going to be very close to the ground. So by feathering that in, as well as around other areas that may also not want a very harsh cut line and high contrast between the sky, it does this type of feathering. Well, it's easy enough to fix, but it won't fix it in necessarily every case, but quite a few. There's also cases where you might want to do defringing. There's cases on different weather conditions where you might want to do some other types of sky swaps. And I cover this and all of that as well in my course on professional exterior real estate photography. I do have a link to that down in the description for this video. And I've got a link to other information that you might find useful as well. But let's get on with this tutorial on how to do this quick fix for sky swap bleed. So coming back over here to Photoshop, let's back up just a little bit. I'm gonna get rid of this sky swap mask. I'm just gonna completely delete it for now so we can see what I was doing. So this is the sky that I wanted to place in there. And I can see where I wanna place it, for instance, by putting its layer opacity down to about 50%, moving it into place, then changing it back to 100%. Now to do the sky swap, what I would do is go down to the layer that I'm working on that needs the sky swap, and then I would select the sky. So I'd go up to the select menu and select the sky. This is then Photoshop's sky swap technique done manually, where I can see that the sky is selected. It doesn't look like it's feathering it in, but it actually is. If I go up to then the sky layer up here and I apply a layer mask by just clicking this little icon down here, then I've got that sky applied. Looks good until you take that close look at it and that's where we can see then that the sky has bled on the chimney and other parts of the house. If you want to see everything, the first step you should do is on the mask for the sky, not the layer, but the mask for the sky do alt click, or if you're on a Mac, do option click. That way then you can see the entire mask. I just zoomed all the way out here. And you can see that there are many areas here where it bled in. And that's just really not acceptable. You can see it's bleeding onto the house in various locations. It's bleeding onto the chimney. And also look here, we've got some fringing problems. Now I talk about in the uh, exterior course how to really get rid of this fringing very accurately. But here what we're gonna do, and we're mostly concerned about, are these bleed areas, which is very, very common. So, while we stay on the mask for that sky layer, we'll leave it selected just like this, but while we're on that mask, the next thing we wanna do is go up to Image, Adjustments, and then to Levels. And then we'll get this dialog where there's two sliders we'll use, one on the right and one on the left. We'll start with the one on the left because that's going to take care of the bleed. All we have to do is bring that slider to the right and as you do, watch that bleed go away. You can see now that it's turning black. This is where it was bleeding on and now if we move this to the right, you can see it's getting rid of that. Now we can move this other slider to try to get rid of some of this haloing. You can see this right here, these gray areas, that's also where it's feathering and that can cause some fringing problems as well on some of the branches and this can help a little bit. If you bring this slider then to the left, you can see then those halos start going away. So now we've got a more refined mask with less feathering because we contracted the levels across the tonal range using this levels adjustment. Then we can click OK, and if we go back to the mask and do Alt click or Option click on a Mac, we can see this is what we have. So if we were to look at before and after, we can see this is what it was before, 
and this is then after the adjustment. A big difference. Let's go ahead and zoom all the way out and see that difference again by going from here to there. Now there are a lot of other adjustments we could do to this, for instance to really pump it up like this, which has got some other adjustments to it, stuff that I also show in the exteriors course as well. But the big thing here was that we could get rid of our bleed, we used a crushing of the levels across the tonal range by using levels. And that then got rid of all that feathering that Photoshop wants to put in, thinking that the sky needs to fade into the horizon, but it's something we definitely don't want across a house when we're doing real estate photography.